Jesus. Thank you for your wonder in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for a day like this, for the privilege. Thank you for the privilege to, for the privilege to stand in your presence once again, King of glory. Even as we gather today, may your name be magnified. May you be lifted, Lord God of hosts, without whom we are nothing. Without God, we are nothing. And there is nothing we can do without him. Father, we acknowledge our dependence on you. We acknowledge our dependence on you. May you help us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Honestly, I'm not seeing Facebook online. I'm not seeing Facebook yet. Those on Facebook, are we connected? So welcome, child of God. I'm meant to understand that Facebook is life, although I cannot dictate it from here. But whatever, may the Lord be glorified. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you praise, mighty God. Amen. So, child of God, we are here today. Let us welcome the presence of God. Let us welcome the presence of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Let us welcome the presence of Jesus. He's our maker. He's our burden bearer. We depend so much on him. Without him, we can do nothing. Amen and amen. Father, we welcome you. We welcome you. Thank you for being with us. We bless your name, O oh Lord. Father, I hand over this program tonight to you. We hand over this program today to you, O oh Lord. May you be magnified. May you be exalted. In the name of Jesus, let Jesus be glorified. Let Jesus be magnified. Father, through this program this evening, may you bless your people. Father, through this program this evening, may your people be lifted. Father, through this program this evening, may your people be blessed. Father, through this program this evening, may your people be blessed. May your people be inspired in the name of Jesus. Through this program, O oh Lord, may somebody be lifted hey, from the pit of prayerlessness to the mountain of prayerfulness. In the name of Jesus. Father, through this program this evening, may somebody begin to pray as you, as you desire and not as we desire. In the glorious name of Jesus. We bless you, we bless you, Jesus. We bless you, we bless you, Jesus. We magnify you, we magnify you, Jesus. Thank you, ancient of days. Father, I hand over this program to you. Let the signature of your presence be upon what we do here tonight, O oh Lord. May we speak the words that come from you. May your anointing be upon those who speak and those who hear. Both the speaker and the hearers, may we be blessed abundantly. And may what you are doing in your life tonight be noted in eternity. And may it be so that we benefit our souls, even our spirits, and give us victory here on earth. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. So, children of God, here we are today, seeing all our general theme, which is the spirit of prayer. Amen. It is by the spirit of prayer that we will survive. Amen. That we will come out victorious through the battles of life. Praise the Lord. This world in which we live is one that is full of battles. Praise the Lord. We live in a battlefield. Yes, yes, this life is a battlefield. There is always a tension, friction between light and darkness, between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness. There is, yes, thank you, Jesus, that we are not left all alone. Amen. We have assistance. The Lord Jesus is our assistance. 
The Lord Jesus helps us. The Lord has given us his Holy Spirit, his Spirit to be with us, giving us his Holy Spirit to abide with us, giving us his Holy Spirit to help us. Praise the Lord. So be not defeated and be not be discouraged whenever you're passing through the storms of life because the Holy Spirit will help you. The Holy Spirit will help you. That is why we are here tonight to declare that the Holy Spirit is our helper, to declare that the Holy Spirit is your helper, that the Spirit, the Spirit, that the Spirit of God is your helper. Praise the Lord. That is why we are here tonight to declare that the Spirit of God is your helper. That is why we are here tonight to decree that the Holy Spirit of prayer is given for us. Amen. And there is nothing we can do without that spirit of prayer. There is nothing we can do without the Holy Spirit of prayer. Child of God, give me a few moments to um, connect back, try to get those Facebook on another one. Praise the Lord. So the spirit of prayer is our topic. Praise the Lord. I want you to take your time, go back to our previous messages, and they listen. Amen. I want you to take your time to go to our previous messages and listen to the previous days. And you will understand where we are today. And you understand what God is doing in our lives today. Then you will understand this message fully. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I just succeeded in, in connecting those on Facebook, but on another wall, not on the main page. Praise the Lord. So if you are connected, may your life be blessed in the name of Jesus. This year is a year of prayer. This year is a year the children of God must rise on the wings of prayer. Amen. Those who are not prayerful should begin to pray. Those who have not been praying should begin to pray. Amen. It is a year of prayer. It is a year of the glory of the Lord. When by prayer we will conquer, when we discover that we are creatures of prayer. Thank you, Jesus. So as our team explains the spirit of prayer, how do you know when the spirit of prayer is in you? Praise the Lord. I want to understand what the spirit of prayer is by explaining the characteristics of the spirit of prayer and what could be happening in your life when the spirit of prayer comes upon you, then you can understand if you are actually operating by the spirit of prayer or if you are operating by your own spirit. Amen. Somebody can be praying, but not with the spirit of prayer. Hallelujah. So it is the will of God that we receive the spirit of prayer. As said in Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10, upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, some Bible, some Bible versions we say, upon the house of David, I will pour out the spirit of grace and of supplication, or the spirit of grace and of prayer. This is the desire of God, so that by the spirit of prayer, we conquer. How far can we go without the spirit of prayer? How far can we conquer without the spirit of prayer? Not really much. This is why even though many children of God do pray, yet they are defeated in the battles of life, defeated in family battles, defeated in battles surrounding them, defeated in the battles of destiny. Some do not even know at all anything about their battles, about battles in their lives. Many know, but they, they are helpless. Many children of God are helpless. They do not know what to do. But that's not for us anyway. Amen. We are not ignorant of the devices of the enemy. And we have been given a weapon. The weapon we have been given is the weapon of prayer. The weapon of prayer. So the Lord is saying that he will pour out upon you and upon myself the spirit of prayer. He will pour out upon you and upon me the spirit of prayer so that we will pray according to how God wants and not 
how we want. Amen. Many children of God pray not as God wants, but as they want. Not in the mind of God, but in their own mind. They pray their own prayers and not the prayers of God. Their method is carnal and not spiritual. Amen. The spirit is opposed to the carnal. The spiritual man is opposed to the carnal man. The spirit of God is opposed to carnality. And the word of God made us understand that the spirit and the carnal are always at war, always at war with, with one another. Praise the Lord. So this is what you need to understand that for you to pray well, you need the spirit of prayer upon you. You need the spirit of prayer. Amen. Because if you do not need the spirit of prayer, the Lord will not promise it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to tell you some characteristics of the spirit of prayer. Amen. And we are going to take that. We are going to read the prophet Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10. Zechariah 12, 10. And the word of God says, And I will pour out a spirit of compassion and supplication on the house of David and supplication on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. I will pour out a spirit of compassion and supplication on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that when they look on the one whom they have pierced, they shall mourn for him as one mourns for an only son, and weep, and weep bitterly over him as one weeps over a firstborn. Amen. So from this passage, from this verse, I will draw out the characteristics of the spirit of prayer. Number three, number one thing the spirit of prayer does in you is that the spirit of prayer makes you feel what the Lord feels. The concerns of the Lord are your concerns. The spirit of prayer, you feel what the Lord feels. His concerns are your concerns. The bodies of the Lord are your burdens. What moves God moves you. If the Lord is happy, you are happy. If the Lord is unhappy, you are unhappy. That's one thing the spirit of prayer makes you do. It is no longer about you, but it's about Jesus. It's no longer about what you can achieve, but what God can achieve through you. Amen. A lot of Christians do pray, truly, we pray and pray, but a lot of people do not make headway in prayer. Their prayers are not answered. They keep praying. And when you keep praying and your prayers are not answered, you go to become tired. Sometimes you be, some people come to believe that God does not answer prayers. Some people believe that there is no God. And others will believe that God answers the prayers of few people, maybe the men of God, the prophets and the big pastors, you know. But that's not true. The problem is many human beings want to deal with God according to their own standards and not according to God's own standards. Praise the Lord. Many of us who want to approach God according to our own standards and not according to the standards of God. And that's where the problem is. God is to be understood. God is to be learned. There are ways of God. That is why Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So if there is a way to do something, in order to do that thing well, you need to follow that way. You need to follow the way in order to do such a thing well. Praise the Lord. If God has laid out this way and you want to do it the other way, you are on your own. Hallelujah. So that's why many people do not get results when they pray. And that's why many Christians are defeated in their, in their battles, in the battles they fight. But it's my prayer for you, child of God, that as you listen to this message, as you participate in this program today, that the spirit of God will begin to move inside you, that the spirit of prayer will begin to move inside you in the name of Jesus, that your heart will be connected to God and what God desires will be what you desire. And you will begin to do what God wants you begin to achieve what God wants in the place of prayer and no longer what you want. Amen. And I tell you, what God wants is the best for you. Hallelujah. 
in the name of Jesus. Father, let your hearts be upon this program. Let anyone who is participating on this program receive the touch of God. Father, by your spirit, may you teach your people how to pray. In the name of Jesus. So as I said, the spirit of prayer will make your prayer points to become the prayer points of God. I preached a message a few weeks ago, not a, about three weeks ago. The message is on YouTube. Um, I'm not sure if I posted it on Facebook. That message is um, how your prayers can help you. I'm trying to remember the caption of that message now. Amen. Listening in prayer. The secret of one of one of the secrets of powerful prayer is listening in prayer, or pray listening while praying, so that in your place of prayer, God is speaking to you. The Holy Spirit is telling you what to pray next, what to pray about next. The Holy Spirit gives you the next prayer point. You are no longer the person who is writing down your prayer points. Amen. The Holy Spirit gives you prayer points. That is praying the prayer of God. Praise the Lord. That is where your prayer points are now the prayer points of God. Because we are humans. We do not actually know everything we need to know. We do not even know the problem we are facing. We do not understand fully the intricacies of our challenges, but the Holy Spirit does. So when the spirit of prayer comes upon you, he will help you to pray through because the spirit of prayer is guiding you, telling you what to do, even giving you prayer points. Yes, it happens. God can give you by his Holy Spirit, God can give you prayer points while you pray. Thank you, Jesus. So that is one thing the spirit of prayer, that is the second thing the spirit of prayer does for you. The spirit of prayer, number one, makes you feel what the Lord feels. The concerns of the Lord are your concerns. Secondly, the second thing the spirit of prayer does for you is that your prayer points becomes the prayer points of God. Or the concerns of God are your concerns. So he gives you prayer points. Amen. I've explained that. Number three, the number thirteen, the spirit of prayer does for you is that the spirit of prayer makes you detest unrighteousness and sin. The spirit of prayer makes you to detest unrighteousness and sin. You stay away from iniquity. You stay away from sin. In fact, you will hate sin. Amen. Because sin suppresses us from God. Sin suppresses the people of God from God. When the people of God dwell in sin, they cannot really reach God. Amen. Because they pray, they, that sin has made, has made their hearts unconducive. That's what sin does. Sin makes our hearts unconducive for God. And God can no longer move. Amen. Even when God is speaking, because there is a, there is a blame in your conscience, because there is a sin speaking against you. Yes, sin has a voice. Every sin has a voice speaking. And that is what the blood of Jesus does when the blood of Jesus comes to silence the voice of sin, to wash our hearts clean of every sin and iniquity. Praise the Lord. So this is what God does. This, his spirit of prayer makes you detest sin. You will just stay away from sin because you know that the children of God truly do not commit sin. And anyone who commits sin according to the word of God that the spirit of God is not in that person. Praise the Lord. So the spirit of prayer, when he comes into you, will make you to detest sin and stay away from unrighteousness. Another thing the spirit of prayer does is that the spirit of prayer keeps you constantly in the presence of God. Hallelujah. The spirit of prayer keeps you constantly in the presence of God. May wherever you are now, child of God, may the anointing of the Lord come over you May the presence of God overshadow you in the name of Jesus. May something begin to happen in your spirit. May your life be activated right now by the presence of God available right now in the name of Jesus. May your life begin to shift. May your life begin to shift. May your life begin to shift by the power of the Holy Ghost. May your life begin to shift. May your life begin to shift. May your life begin to shift. In the name of Jesus, may your life begin to shift. 
in the name of Jesus. May your prayer life begin to receive fresh fire and fresh anointing of the Holy Ghost. Let fresh grace come upon you. Let fresh anointing come upon you. In Amasa Sabina Komeri Nayarada Basitaya, Manke Mezosi Pamana Zisa Prani Mayakayada, Randa Kamana Saba. Let the giant in you arise. Let the Lord raise the giant in you. May 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 the Lord raise the giant in you. In the glorious name of Jesus. May the Lord raise the giant in you in the glorious name of Jesus. May the Lord raise the giant in you in the mighty name of Jesus. May through you, may the Lord begin to work wonders in your life. May the Lord begin to work miracles in your life and in your destiny. May the Lord use you to perform wonders in your family, in your generation. May the Lord use you as an instrument in your bloodline. May the Lord use you as Moses, as Deborah. As a rescuer, as a deliverer. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord use you. Use you to preserve your life. Use you to preserve your family and all those dear to you. May the Lord use you to actualize his own divine purposes in the glorious name of Jesus. May the hand of God be upon you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. So as I was saying, the spirit of prayer keeps you constantly in the presence of God. The spirit of prayer, when he comes upon you, will keep you constantly in the presence of God. Every point in time, you are conscious of the presence of God in your life. Amen. The spirit of prayer keeps you always connected. Always connected. In the spirit, you are connected. In the spirit, you are looking for information. You are trying to fish out information in the spirit. That's what the spirit of God does. That's what the spirit of prayer does when he rests upon you, child of God. And it is my prayer for you that the spirit of prayer will rest upon you. Amen. That you will begin to pray the prayers of God and no longer your own prayer. That the hammer of God will rise through your own words. Amen. Because the Bible said, is my word not like fire? Is it not like hammer shattering rocks to pieces? When the spirit of prayer dwells inside you, one thing that will happen is that your words will begin to have weight. Your words will begin to have weight in the spirit. Hallelujah. May your words have weight in the spirit, in the glorious name of Jesus. May your words begin to have weight in the spirit, in the mighty name of Jesus. May you grow by the spirit of the Lord. Amen and amen. May you grow by the spirit of the Lord, in the name of Jesus. So the spirit of prayer keeps you constantly in the presence of God. The spirit of prayer keeps you constantly in the presence of God because your body is the temple of God. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you. Amen. So if your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, it means that God lives in you. And it is true. It's amazing that God lives in you, child of God. Amen and amen. God lives in you. Praise the Lord. So when God lives in you, you're going to know that something is inside you. Amen. At every point in time, you are conscious of your body. At every point in time, you are conscious of your physical body. So at every point in time, you are, you are supposed to be conscious of your spiritual life, of your spirit, be conscious of your soul, and be conscious of the person who dwells in you. Be conscious of the person who lives in you. Men are so many are. It is my prayer that your life be activated and that you be always conscious of him who dwells in you, of the Holy Spirit who dwells in you. In the name of Jesus. Another thing that the spirit of prayer does when he lives in you is that the spirit of prayer makes you highly sensitive spiritually. Praise the Lord. The spirit of prayer makes you highly sensitive spiritually so that your spirit now begins to perform like an antenna, a radio antenna that can draw information, that can trap information from the spirit realm. Amen. You are sensitive by the spirit of prayer to the voice of God. You are sensitive by this prayer 
to the voice of the Spirit, to the move of the Spirit. By the Spirit of God, you are sensitive to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That is when some people will, will say, I felt like I should do this, or I felt like I should do this. And they did it and it worked. It was actually the promptings of God, the promptings of the Holy Spirit of God. This is one of the things the Spirit of Prayer does for you. He keeps you steadily sensitive. Sensitive. If your environment changes, you know that your environment has changed. Amen. If there is a danger around the corner, immediately you know, and you begin to intercede. When the Spirit of God, when the Spirit of Prayer comes upon you, you are a man of prayer, you become a woman of prayer. Then the Lord will begin to use you in your family. The Lord will begin to use you even in your community. The Lord will begin to use you even to perform things, signs and wonders that are even far from you, which means he will begin to use you to bless people, to bless people around you, to bless people that are not even close to you. The Lord will begin to use you to actualize his divine purposes. Hallelujah. This is what the Spirit of Prayer does for you. You are highly sensitive. Amen. I used to tell people that nothing happens without God revealing it to us. Amen. Anything that happens, God reveals. God is speaking steadily. But the problem is that a lot of people are not attentive spiritually in order to understand what God is saying. Praise the Lord. I had a friend who was robbed. You know, thieves went to his house and they broke in, stole his car, stole his gadgets, and the people were, uh, you know, pitying him. So we are even gi giving him mo money, you know, to help him to replace those things. But who will replace your car when it is stolen? Praise the Lord. That can happen. But there was a question I asked that brother. I asked him, but did you not know, did you not somehow sense that tips will come to your house? He said that I was the only person that had asked him this question, that he had certain dreams prior to that day, that you are actually a pointer to that. And he did not try to read meaning into those dreams. Amen. When people die suddenly, when people go and die on road accident, see, such a thing was revealed, but because nobody was attentive to catch it. See, our Lord, our God is a loving God. He does not allow evil to be for his people. But because he has given us the authority, he has given us the mandate in prayers and through prayers, he will let us pray in order to intervene. Amen. God will allow you to pray in order to intervene in your situation. If you understand what is called the dominion mandate, the dominion mandate means that God has given humans, we humans, God has given us the earth to occupy. That's why he said, fill the world, increase, multiply. Fill the world, subdue it, have dominion over all these things. That is the dominion back mandate. In other words, God is saying, I have done my own duty. I'm now handing this place over to you. You take care of it. Make it what you want it to be. So the reason children of God are defeated is that, number one, they do not pray. Because prayer is now inviting God to come into your situation. If you do not invite God, he will not come. You know, I have had people say, when bad things happen, I have had people say that it is the will of God. That if, it is the, if it's not the will of God, that is not, it will not happen. My brother, my sister, it is not true. Something that is not the will of God can still happen. Amen. Something that is not the will of God can still happen. but. If you pray, then God could come in because God cannot work for you without your consent. It will be illegal. It will be illegal. The spirit realm is, is a legal realm. Amen. Spirits don't go where they are not invited. Anywhere you see any spirit in action, look around. There is a human being behind that. No spirit oppressed on this planet without the permission of a human. Whether they are evil spirits, whether they are good spirits, no spirits can operate on earth without partnering with a human being. 
the people who work on the dark side, on the side of Satan, the witch doctors, the witches, the occult people, they invite spirits. They make sacrifices to invite spirits, and those spirits, they will send those spirits to go and cause harm, to go and kill, to go and destroy. Amen. They do that on their altars. But for us who are the children of God, we have the altar of prayer. We have an altar called prayer. Even in our lives, there are altars of prayers in our lives. Your heart should be an altar so that when you pray, God can intercede. The Holy Spirit can move through your prayers. When you pray, the angel of God could move through your prayers. And the angel of God could go and be achieving great things and wonderful things. But when you keep quiet and say, God, are you not there? God, are you not there? And God is saying, my son, my daughter, are you not there? Are you quiet? Amen. God cannot do nothing here without you calling upon him. This is true from Genesis to Revelation. Amen. Time will not permit me to speak more about that. Maybe another day. But when you understand this, then you should understand why you should receive the Holy Spirit, why you should be baptized with the Holy Spirit, and why you should, be, why you should operate by the spirit of prayer. Somebody say, spirit of prayer, come upon me. Spirit of prayer, enter me. Spirit of prayer, enter me. Spirit of prayer, enter me. Holy Spirit, enter my life. E serena manada barada su sepelinanteria. Rembe so man intele de pesa. Spirit of prayer, enter my life. Man zemina kele. Efra ne mina kamina handeri santaraba. Empra ne mi santarada vilia. Membra so mina karaba. In the name of Jesus. Child of God, another thing, the spirit of prayer will make you to become is that the spirit of prayer will make you a watchman. The spirit of prayer will make you a watchman in your family, in your community. We make you a watchman over nations. Amen. The Bible said in Isaiah chapter 62, verse 6. Amen. Uh, and the Bible says that. Uh, I place watchmen upon your towers, O Jerusalem. I place watchmen upon your towers, upon your towers or upon your walls, and these watchmen shall not keep quiet day and night, and they shall not sleep. Amen. So this, the spirit of prayer makes you a watchman over your family. Amen. It, it has always been my prayer and my desire that every family will have a watchman. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It has already been my prayer that every family will have at least one watchman. Amen. In every family, there is a watchman, which is will not do what they want. Occult men will not do what they want. Which doctors will not achieve what they want. Amen. In every family where there is at least one watchman who is awake, who is active spiritually. No evil befalls that family without the watchman knowing. Amen. So it is good to be a watchman so that in your place of prayer, when you are a watchman, it, it means prayer has become your lifestyle. God can begin to reveal things to you in the place of prayer. Amen. Any man of God, any child of God who is a prayerful child of God, it's just a matter of time. The person becomes automatic, be, becomes automatically prophetic. Amen. There is a difference between being a prophet and and be, and being prophetic praise the lord when the spirit of prayer is upon you you will become prophetic being prophetic means that you can detect the movement of spirits you can detect the movement of spirits in your life around you in your family amen you can trap information you can trap signals from the spirit realm and you interpret it amen that's why when you are a, 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 a man of prayer, a woman of prayer, when the spirit of prayer indwells you, you can actually look at somebody and tell the person certain things about him or about her. And they will be surprised and ask you, how did you know? Not because you are a prophet or prophetess, but because you are operating by the spirit of prayer. And once you are operating by the spirit of prayer, your own spirit is, is, is active. Your own spirit becomes sensitive. And you can dictate information in the spirit realm. Amen. Today, in the morning, earlier today, I was in a funeral mass where the person who, where the diseased is not actually somebody I knew, 
and I was not told anything about the disease, but as they, as I was saying the someone, my spirit started searching. I start, I wanted to find out certain things about the woman. She was above 80 years. I started searching certain things about her. I wanted to get some information about her in order to use it to preach. Nobody told me anything about her, but I said about four things about the life of that woman. And the family we are, the family was surprised. They were surprised. It's not because I'm a prophet, because but because by the spirit of prayer, my spirit is so active that I can search your own spirit. I can use my spirit to search your spirit and search your soul and get some information. Praise the Lord. So that is what happens when you become a child of God, an intercessor, when you become a watchman, when the spirit of prayer dwells inside you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Another thing the spirit of prayer does is that once the spirit of prayer dwells in you, you pray in season and out of season. You pray or you don't stop praying. You always pray. You even pray the own, God's own prayers. Amen. You pray by the spirit of God. So your capacity is enlarged. Amen. Prayer enlarges, enlarges your capacity. Enlarges the capacity of your spirit. Amen. So that you are growing, you are maturing, you are growing, you are maturing in the spirit. That is one, one thing and one great thing the spirit of prayer does for you. Child of God, hear me. It is not every problem that you can solve. It is not every problem that raises its head in your family that you can solve. So you cannot solve them. Not because God is no longer powerful, but because you are not strong enough to carry the power of God needed to solve that problem. Child of God, pray, say, Father, enlarge my capacity. Oh, Lord, enlarge my capacity. Oh, Lord, enlarge my capacity. Enlarge my spiritual capacity. In the name of Jesus. It is my desire and my prayer that your capacity be enlarged in the name of Jesus. So, child of God, the power of God is bigger than the ocean. I want to use that as an example to explain to you why you need your capacity enlarged by the spirit of prayer. The power of God is bigger than the ocean. And the water from that ocean is needed to solve problems. It's needed to wash somebody. It's needed to build a house. Water is needed. Amen. But your capacity is the container with which you go to the ocean to fetch water, with which you go to the stream to fetch water. If your container is as small as this, is as small as this, as mean this is a cup. Amen. Just say that this is a cup. If your capacity is as small as this cup, the water this, this cup can fetch can solve a problem. But we can it solve every problem that water will solve? No. The water this cup can fetch will only solve a problem that is under the that is below the capacity of this vessel, of this container. Amen. So your heart, your spirit, your soul is like this container. If it is small, it will get the power of God, but small according to capacity. Amen. So one thing the spirit of prayer does for you is that the spirit of prayer helps to enlarge your capacity, makes you ready to receive. As you pray, you are enlarged. As you pray, you are enlarged. You are growing. You are maturing in the spirit. Amen. Like someone who is going to the gym to develop, to build more muscles, to build triceps and biceps. Amen. To build six packs. Amen. To grow and to become strong. You go to the gym, you are lifting those weights. You go another day, you are lifting those weights. You are exercising yourself. You continue to do it a week, three weeks, six, six months, one year, two years. You will enlarge. You will become a macho man. Praise the Lord, as big as a bouncer. Amen. That is what happens to the people of prayer. Those who are prayer by the spirit of prayer, in the spirit, they are stronger. In the spirit, they are stronger. In the spirit, they are becoming stronger. Maybe there is a witch that has been a problem to your family. 
When you start praying, that which will still be defeating you. But don't worry, just keep praying. You will be growing. One day you're going to smash that switch because you have grown capacity beyond the capacity of that switch by the spirit of the living God. Amen. And this kind of prayer is not the prayer you pray in English language. It's not the prayer you pray in your native dialect. It's the prayer you pray in the language of God. Let's in the name of Jesus. And it's my prayer that before this program, these 21 days will come to an end, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And you'll be speaking in tongues. You'll be praying in tongues just as I do, just like many children of God do. You cannot have the spirit of prayer without praying in tongues. It is an evidence that the Holy Ghost has taken over your tongues and will use your tongue to perform wonders in the spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, as many as they are listening, may you baptize them with the spirit of prayer. May the Holy Ghost begin to move inside you. May the anointing of God begin to move inside you. May the power of God begin to move inside you. Child of God, I want you to pray. Let the power of God come upon you. Say, oh Lord, touch my spirit. Touch my spirit. I am ready to grow in prayer. I am ready to grow in the spirit. I am ready to receive the spirit of prayer. I am ready to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Before the peace program comes to an end, every participant must receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. If you want, once you want and you desire, I will pray for you. The Lord will baptize you. Your life will never remain the same. In the name of Jesus, I pray that the Lord will open your eyes to discover your potentials, that your potentials, what you can achieve, your abilities, your capabilities, the things you can achieve in the spirit realm. In the name of Jesus, through prayers, may prayers become your daily meal. In the name of Jesus, may you not get tired, may you never get tired of praying. Through prayers, may God wrought miracles in your life, in your families and in all that concern you, in the name of Jesus. I pray that your life be blessed. I pray that your life be blessed. Child of God, let us close with this moment of prayer. Let us take one minute and pray. Pray, pray, pray. Ask the Lord to baptize you with the spirit of prayer. Ask the Lord to draw you closer to himself so as to fill you with his spirit. Hey, mercy, man, I had a brilliant parable. Men se po mini raka sa kamina sere. Kevra de mina senta pa rosa fe komenaire. Rin se po na indescopelia. Evra so mina kere do su miniare. Man de ni komeniara po sene ke paka. Men komeni san pe komina se ke pele taraba. May the language of the spirit begin to draw closer to you. May the language of the spirit as I'm speaking it. Be deposited in your heart. E baso mina sumene in de faso ke mende. Le fra so mina kobre so mina ke de zo prede. Me so pa kamozi mande so ke paya da basse ta. Me mbro senda kurestayaba. In the name of Jesus. I cover your life with the blood of Jesus. I cover you with the blood of Jesus. May the Lord do a new thing in your life. Even tonight. May the Lord do a new thing in your life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, child of God. I want to ask you to hit the like button, hit the like button, and share this video so that more people will get it. Share this video so that more people will also be blessed. God is doing wonderful things. I know this is a new channel. This is a new page. But those who participate in our program so far, they always have testimonies to give. The Lord is working on your life anytime you are listening to this man of God to this through this channel. So I ask that you share this message as much as you can. Share it in your Facebook groups, in your WhatsApp groups, and in somebody's life will be transformed because of you. May God bless you abundantly, and may you be preserved in the name of Jesus. Those who have watched even to this moment, may your life be preserved, and may God bless you. I can see um, on Facebook, those who followed on Facebook, uh, I don't know your name, but what I see here is Rising Sun. Rising Sun, just as you, uh, you have chosen Rising Sun as your name on Facebook, may your life rise like the sun. Amen. According to the word of God in Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1, even verse 2 and verse 3, in verse 3, the Lord says that nations, with, nations will come to your light. Kings will come to the brightness of your rising. May nations come to your light in the name of Jesus. May you rise above your enemies. May you rise above the circumstances in your life in the name of Jesus. May you shine ever brightly like the sun 
in the name of Jesus. And those who follow on YouTube, may your life be blessed and may your life be changed. May the Holy Spirit open your eyes to discover your capacity and may you flow by the Spirit of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I bless your life. And may the Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Shalom.